Friday hoops in Durham. And away we go. Duke coming off that win Tuesday here against LaSalle, 95-66. John Shire said he was really happy with the game, well-rounded, and thought it was the closest they've had to a 40-minute game so far this year in the first five. Filipowski got his own miss, and then it had poked away. And here comes Southern Indiana. Team off to a 1-5 start. Keep an eye on 21, A.J. Smith, and 33, Jeremiah Hernandez. Those are the top two scorers for the Screaming Eagles. One reason I think Shire was so impressed with his team. I thought they started the last game inside out like they did this first possession. It didn't end up well with Filipowski scoring, but they playing inside out was a close big for this team. And do you like that? I do, because they, early in the year, I thought they started outside in, meaning they were perimeter and ended shooting. Five, you know, multiple threes to start the game. First five out of six possession threes. Starting inside out just sets the tone. Look at the two starters. Same starting group. Here's Mark Mitchell who, like Tyrese Proctor, John Shire thought had his best game of the season against LaSalle. Tyrese Proctor who is shooting it better recently. He is. He's shooting 38% from behind the arc, but I, I think his aggressive is the key to this Duke team. The more aggressive he is, the better he is because he's so unselfish. He's not always looking to score. There is Sam Mervis. Uh, Filipowski switched on to him. The point guard gives it up to Smith working on the baseline. On a skip for Jack Milky, and he can shoot it from deep better than 45%, but he comes up empty on his first triple try. All right, so Proctor, what's it look like being aggressive? Even here, the double team's coming. He finds the open guy. He's already going to make the right decision, but just looking to attack. Jared McCain, no dice, but an offensive rebound on the weak side. Filipowski says, why not? And he spun it out. Southern Indiana in transition, and Jeremiah Hernandez, who's got a stroke you like. He does. I, the ball looks good coming out of his hand. He's really aggressive. He didn't care if he misses three in a row or makes three in a row. He's going to shoot the next one. Great job by Southern Indiana, taking advantage of Filipowski falling in the crowd. Team in just its second year at the Division I level coming up from the D2 ranks. Here's Filipowski. He's done such a good job passing out of the post this year. They do a really good job in internally with each other. Passing the ball and the cutting big. When Duke, when Duke throws the ball inside, the opposite big is always diving to the front of the rim. Chatted with John Shire about an hour and a half ago, and that was one of the things he said. We have shared the ball very well, and that's one of the big places he's seen improvement since the loss here to Arizona. The talent is always there. This team won't have problems scoring the ball. They just got to defend their rebound and share the ball. There's Milky. We told you, better than 45% from three. 16 for 43 coming in for the six foot seven junior with that high release. They're going to have to make multiple threes tonight if they want to pull off the upset. They know that they can't grind it inside against Duke's size. There's Jeremy Roach off the ball screen. Back iron. Filipowski battled for it, but A.J. Smith runs it down. And a turnover on the pass underneath. All right, so we mentioned just the second year at the D1 level for Southern Indiana, based out of Evansville, Indiana, university founded in 1965. Started playing basketball five years later, first at the NAIA level, then in D2, and the program really took off in the mid-90s with Bruce Pearl. Nine years as the head coach, including that 1995 Division II National Championship team that the current head coach, Stan Gerrard, was on and starred for. Off the miss, it's a rebound for Keyron Powell. Duke's having a tough time early here. They're not matching up. They're getting cross-matched up, and they're losing. They're not setting their defense, and it's costing five points here early. Powell is the trailer in the Richard Jr. Center. The Houston transfer has the lead at three for the Eagles. They're really worried about Duke guards coming off the ball screen, so they're trapping them, hard-hedging them early. Lepowski misses now, and Duke is two of eight shooting, and one of five from three. Mervis trying to turn the corner on Mark Mitchell. Off the hedge. Smith gave it up, and now Hernandez. A couple of hesitations on Roach and spun it out. Filipowski leads the break. Duke's been running more. Mitchell to the corner. Proctor. In and out. And the rebound down to Mervis. Great job there. Big men pushing it up in transition is the hardest thing to defend. Another good look for Duke. They just haven't been able to cash in so far in these first four and a half minutes. 
Harper to summon the ball screen. Not known for his scoring. And left it short. Got his own miss. Backs it out. Here's Smith. Yes, sir. Great offense. You got lucky sometimes. Ball falls in your lap and finds you, but way to punish the defense there. A.J. Smith is a talented guy. He has the size and the athleticism to make a difference in this game. He has spearheaded an 8-0 run for Southern Indiana. And then a tip from Mervis. And a turnover. Southern Indiana leads by six, and they have knocked down three triples. Mervis found it, and right back out for A.J. Smith. It's bow time. <laughs> Part of his 12 years as the head coach at D2 UND before taking over at Southern Indiana. And now in year two of this transition, part of a four-year process to get fully to the D1 level. And how about this start for his team at Cameron, Jeremiah Hernandez up to five and a 10-0 run. And he said this today, it means a lot more when you're, when you're coaching at your alma mater. And, you know, he's, he's accustomed to winning. And he's not gonna accept anything less than that. And you see that to his team here early in Durham. Caleb Foster, Ryan Young, and Sean Stewart are in off the bench for John Shire, and Young turns it over. Here's Jordan Tillman leading the break, one of their top scorers who comes off the bench, averaging double figures, and he is always hunting his shot. He's a bucket getter. He's looking to attack every time he touches it. But again, that's the third possession is half. Duke didn't get back and match up. And uncontested layup here on the other end, late rotation. And now a 12-0 run for a 1-5 Southern Indiana team that's only win this year is against Division II Tiffin University. Here on the defensive end, you see Ryan Young with his back end, and Mervis comes and digs it out and gets in the transition. Again, never late matchup, rotation is late, and they're punishing Duke mistakes right now. And that's what that is. They're just coming out right now, Duke's not ready to play yet, and they're just taking advantage of it. Tyrese Proctor to key it in to Jeremy Roach. Gets to his spot at the ACC logo and doesn't get the roll. Young on the offensive boards will head to the line for a couple amid this slow shooting start for Duke, just two of 10 from the floor. I think for Coach Shire, the most disappointing thing right now is, is that for Duke, you cannot allow your energy level on defense affect by shots going in. This team needs to come out, defend, and then when the shots go, you're just, you're just that much better. This team right now, relying on the ball to go through the hoop and trying to feed off this crowd. And when you're not making shots, you get this slow start here. But there's no excuse not to defend. They've given up seven points just by not coming back and matching up. You look at John Shire in his second year, of course, at the helm. He was really pleased with their defense Tuesday against LaSalle. And then we chatted with him a little while ago before this game got started. He said that the two areas we've improved the most Rebounding and valuing the basketball. I think the rebounding is the key for this group, particularly when you go with the smaller lineups. The one game against Arizona, they were out-rebounded by 12, and then they've come back since then and won the glass the last three games. It was a big part of them winning those last three games. Sean Stewart had a chance on the offensive glass after the split from Young, so the lead at nine for Southern Indiana. Smith off the screen from Nolan Coswell. 6 foot 11 fifth year senior transfer from Tennessee Tech going to work and he couldn't muscle it over Stewart. Here's the freshman Foster around the young screen. Back for Proctor and post entry. Young defended by Coswell. Backing him down. Loves to go to that right hand and over the left to score. <laughs> the scouting report you can see Coswell sitting on that left shoulder. Forcing. Young to turn back with that left hand to finish. Great job by Ryan Young. Chris Carroll told us a few weeks ago, yes. we actually did a lefty-only <laughs> workout over the summer with Ryan Young trying to work on that. That is the scouting report on Ryan Young. He wants to get to that left shoulder and shoot that righty hook. There is Jack Campion, fan favorite guard kick. Smith Hoist, and comes up empty, and he will hear that for the next 32 and a half minutes. <laughs> I mean, Ryan Young here gets it in the post and he's just playing, he's just filling his body, gets the middle, wants to spin back. Great job by Coswell. But he just gives up the angle and Ryan Young showed you what I've worked on all off season, getting to that left hand. He's now nine points away from a thousand for his career between Northwestern and now two years here in Durham. He's, an, un he's an underrated defender, I'm sorry, he's an underrated defender also. 
Good to passer. Handed it off, and then Coswell got the block on Stewart. Smith got out of control. Blakes goes diving for it, and a held ball will keep it at this end for Southern Indiana. You can hear the bench in front of Southern Indiana telling the guys, stay home, stay home. Leave a one-on-one -on -one in the post. Coswell comes off. Great job there blocking that. Defending the post comes off with the block on Stewart. By stay home, you mean don't help out. They don't want to help because Ryan Young is all, when he, first thing he does is before he goes to shoot, just like that, he's looking for cutters. So they want to stay home on the cutters and force him. They think that Cosmo length can bother them. Here's Campion, part of the two-headed point guard tandem with Sam Mervis. Smith backs it out. Coswell's got some range. That's too strong. Tipped out by Javius Moore. Seldom used. Hadn't played the last three games. But the fifth-year senior kept it alive. And then Tillman comes up empty. Coswell trying to rescue it, and Duke runs. Blake's left alone. Can knock it down, and Duke is one of seven from three. Duke has had open looks. You know, they, they've been three-point oriented this half, so far this half, but I thought they it's come within the flow of the offense. That's a good shot, just didn't knock it down, but they got to continue to defend. So you talked earlier about outside in versus yes. inside out. You're okay with the looks, even though it is a lot of shots from the three. Right now, I, I, I like it. I just would like to, like to, as long as the ball touches the paint first. You don't want to play just the ball on the perimeter, because if you see what Southern Indiana's doing, they're, they're attacking the paint more and dribbling and then knocking down mid-range shots. How about Jack Campion, the sophomore from Milton, Wisconsin, only averages five points a game, but got to his spot and hit, and he restores the Eagles' lead to nine. Filipowski bangs with Smith, ducked the shoulder, had that roll off the rim. More battles with Young, and it'll stay at this end of the floor with Duke when we come back. Nine points, Southern Indiana lead at Cameron Indoor Stadium. When of their first seven. Well, the first one was a transition defensive verb. You see there, there was confusion on the switch. And then his last one is just an offensive rebound, and it don't match up again. So those are three threes. There's a nine-point difference in the game right now, and that's where those nine points are coming from. Again, a program in its second year at the Division I level that last year went 16 and 17, went 9 and 9 in the Ohio Valley Conference in the OVC, where this year they were picked nine of the 11 teams there. Foster went slashing to the rim and missed it. And Southern Indiana pulls it away. It's a team that has had some close games, though. You say, yeah, one in five record, but they could have three wins. This team very easy to be three wins, if not four. I mean, they had Bucknell, they was up by 13, and then they only lost by, by one against LaSalle. And they feel like they were right there. Yeah, those are in their two most recent games. LaSalle Saturday, one-point loss on the road, and then Bucknell Monday at that 13-point lead midway through the first. Smith with... A neck ball or a wedgie, take your pick. <laughs> you see a sense of urgency there on Duke. Better communication, contested three there. When you're not making shots, you got to continue to defend it. As much as we talk about this Duke team, I think everyone forgets this is still a relatively young group of guys. Outside of Jeremy Roach and Ryan Young, this is a young group. We've got Foster and McCain, the two freshmen out on the floor with the two-time captain Roach, and then the sophomores Mitchell and Filipowski. And it's a scoreless drought of more than three minutes for Duke. Foster on the rip through, had the advantage on Campion. He's been so good coming off the bench for Duke. He's so steady himself. Comes in giving him offense, giving him solid on-ball defense as well. Smith around the screen for Moore. And a dribble handoff for Campion. The lefty moves it. Moore hoists it and hits. How about the minutes from Javius Moore, guy who hadn't played the last three games. He's got his first points of the season. And again, <laughs> another three. And they know they, know they got to get knocked down close to 12, 13 threes if they want to pull off the upset here. Jeremy Kane comes out, closes out short. Moore tell them, you better get out here and guard me. Javius Moore, fifth-year senior from Mississippi, who spent four years in the junior college ranks at Southwest Mississippi, and now in his first year at Southern Indiana. Kyle Filipowski got fouled by Keyron Powell, and misses on the first. 
Last couple of games for Filipowski, just 40 combined minutes. John Shire said post game Tuesday wasn't quite himself in the first half, but Shire thought Filipowski really responded well in the second half with an ankle that was swollen. Shire told us pregame he is 100%, but Filipowski misses both. Well, we know Shire isn't 100%. We can tell by the way he sounded. <laughs> well, sounded like he, yeah, he's fighting the bug a little bit. And you're always fearful of that as a coach because you don't want to give it to your players. Smith going to work, matched up with Foster. Moore drives on Mitchell, forced into a tough shot. Mitchell clears it. Mitchell, fancy dribbling. Sees the opening, and Mark Mitchell gets fouled, doing it all himself. That's always a concern. When your bigs rebound and push, you know, because guards have to stop the ball, you get in cross matchups, and that's what happened there. Committing the foul. Duke's exceptionally dangerous when Filipowski also snatches rebounds and push them. When these two guys, he and Mark Mitchell, get together, rebound well and push the break, Duke's incredibly difficult to stop in transition. Mitchell 76% at the line for his career. Hey, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC Huddle Crew gets you set for another afternoon of football. And then at 6.30, get a complete wrap-up of those games as they get you set for the big primetime matchup between a couple of eight and three teams here on ACCN at 8 Eastern. After the game, a full post-game show to wrap up the night all right here on ACC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Mitchell makes both. It's down to eight with nine minutes to go in this first half at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Good start to extend it. Press a little bit. Pick it up 94 feet. Champion. Baseline drop off for Smith, and he gets the roll. And John Shire's seen enough. He is barking at Mark Mitchell and his Blue Devils and needs a timeout. Seems a step slow defensively right now. 10-point lead for Southern Indiana in the first half. Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. How about Stan Gerard's group here in Durham? They're feeling comfortable right now. They're feeling, them, feeling at home. I mean, coming off the screen here, Duke, no communication. Defensive laps there. McCain steps out. He's late. Knocked down a three in here. Backdoor cut. They're just not ready. Duke just sleepwalking right now on the defensive end, and they're paying for it. Eight and a half to go until halftime for the Blue Devils. Filipowski turns a corner on Powell and gets fouled. So second foul on the big man, Kieran Powell, will plant Filipowski back to the free throw line. I think Filipowski in that time would like to keep that and finish with his left hand. He had Powell on his right side and went to the upper end. I think if he keeps that in his left hand, he gets the and one. I don't think there's a shot block on the floor right now for Southern Indiana. Good on the first. So Powell exits with his two fouls, and Nolan Coswell, the fifth year senior, comes in to replace him. They feel comfortable with their bigs being able to come in. You see Powell get in foul trouble. And they feel comfortable with Coswell coming in, and also Hiddle will come in as a third big. So they feel like they got enough 15 fouls to give to Phil Powell if he starts to hurt them inside. Part of the reason why Stan Gerrard is pretty stringent if you pick up two fouls in the first half, according to Ken Palm, doesn't have a lot of leniency with you. Campion on a tough step back that he hits. He jumps out on film. He's just so active and involved on both sides of the ball for these guys. Roach underneath with an answer. And then the turnover, and Jared McCain cashes in, and four quick ones for Duke. Just that quick. Four quick points for Duke. They're extending that pressure. They're going to have to turn it up on the defensive end. And now Cameron's getting into it. Hernandez searching for something. Moves it to Milky. Now the point guard Campion. Ten to shoot. He's got Mitchell on him. Off the crossover. Bounces for Smith. Oh, that's pretty. 
Great wow. basketball there. Triple penetration, getting in the paint, finding guys on the weak side. And another three-point make. That's five of them now for USI. Filipowski just muscles Coswell. There's no answer for that. We can do that all night. I think Coswell, the closest thing they have is someone to being able to affect his shot. And Filipowski just showed you there. He's no match inside. Just too physically strong for him. His first bucket comes about 13 minutes in. You can see Hernandez. this discussion as well. There's so much confusion in the ball screen defense. Proctor pushes, shovels for Roach. The shot fake, Roach driving. Couldn't get it to go and cleared by Milky. All right, explain that. Oh, the, watch when the ball screen is coming, the interactions. The, the, when you're talking about switching, you want to be all early and often, meaning if I know I'm switching, I'm calling out early. Switch, 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 switch. Duke is so late. Two guys are grabbing the ball and two guys are going away. Double comes. Smith got his miss and then had it poked away by McCain. Proctor in transition. Gets it back from Roach. There's Mitchell on the block. Face is up on Milky. Mitchell spinning. Off glass, no. Oh, Mitchell had a reason to be upset there. I thought he got his arm hooked up when he tried to spin back baseline. And now Campion tries to orchestrate USI into its offense. With under six to go in this first half, leading by seven. Couldn't get it to Smith, so instead the shooter, Milky. Now Smith. Five to shoot. Here's Campion. He's got Mitchell on him. Campion a step back. Oh, and he hit that too. Heat check going on now with Campion. Guy who had one Division I scholarship offer from a team that only now is D1. As Filipowski responds for Duke. That's the danger when you come out slow like this for a team that's not a great three-point shooting team, but they're shooting 54% from behind the arc right now. Six made threes already. If they want to pull off this upset, they're going to need to make about 12 or 13 threes. They're halfway there now. There's Hernandez spinning on Proctor, trying to muscle to the rack, and he does. At seven for Jeremiah Hernandez. Lead back to 10. If he gets going, he's another problem because he's a scorer as well. Pick and pop, Filipowski. Can't connect, and Duke is one of eight from three-point range. Three-point shots falling on one side and not for the Blue Devils here at home. Campion finds Milky, move for Hernandez. Driving on McCain with a scoop. No, Filipowski the rebound. Missed the shot, they're still getting to the rim. They're out of some ease. Filipowski wants it. You've been calling for this. Taking it at Coswell again. Got his own miss. Filipowski met by Coswell. Coswell's up to the challenge right now. Inside of four to go in the first half. One in five, Southern Indiana up by 10 on the number nine team in the country. Here's Milky. Can't knock it down. Filipowski, another rebound. Dude's lucky there. Milky is the best three point shooter on the Southern Indiana team. Got a wide open look there. Mitchell slipped it, and Mitchell scores it. Stan Gerard wants a timeout, sensing some tired legs perhaps with three and a half to go. How about the three point shot for the Eagles? Alarm emojis being fired off around the country right now in the college basketball world with what we have seen the first 17 minutes of this game. Duke has not played well against Southern Indiana. Trailing by eight here, getting late in the first half. See Shire and the Blue Devils come out, extending their defense here. And look at the group that's on the floor. Jaden Blakes is their best on-ball defender. Got Proctor there. Foster gets out to the defensive end. And I think Ryan Young is one of their better bigs from a position of defensive standpoint. They're picking up their intensity here. And just hounding Southern Indiana into a turnover. We had Cruz pass one media timeout. We go right into another. 3.04 to go. Duke down eight at home against USI. Hey, Dorothy. 
who were the He's balling here in Durham. He is. I think he's upset he lost. He, he didn't start the game because he started a couple of games early. The mid-range going left, step back going right, and here just have some with the deep three there. Only averages five right. points a game. Got a quick seven this half. He is a gamer. He's quick. He's crafty. Giving the Blue Devils fits here early in the first half, throughout the first half here. And Duke trying to storm back as Foster drives and got fouled. With less than three to go until halftime. It's a Southern Indiana team that, again, if you're just tuning in, maybe seeing the score, they're in their second year as a D1 program. They're one in five. This tonight is the first ACC team they've ever played. They've defeated one Power Five program in history. That was in 1991 against Wisconsin. But USI was Division II at the time. Well, they've been here. They've been in North Carolina for nine days. On the road, I should say, for nine days. So they practiced Wednesday at NC State and then practiced yesterday here at Thanksgiving here at Duke. And safe to say they feel at home. <laughs> well, Thanksgiving dinner at the pit in Raleigh yesterday. Sean Stewart got the offensive rebound off the miss at the line, and now Foster slashes, hangs in the air, and missed it. Another offensive rebound spurred by Stewart. Great job there, just attacking the paint. Good fortune to get another offensive rebound. Here's the pressure, they're extending their pressure. Jalen Blakes picks up a foul about 70 feet away from the cut. On Lewis. Just a great drive there, off balance there. Stewart does a great job being active on the glass. And Foster comes back to the finish again. How about the job Sean Stewart's done these last few games? John Shire said to his pregame, he's our best rebounder. He's their best athlete as well. And I think he gives them something that this team doesn't have a great job of, and that's size and athleticism. This group right now, the last couple of possessions, has given the effort John Shire's been wanting to see in a frustrating first half. I should be extremely disappointed. Nick Hiddle went pivoting to his left, and then Foster rescues it on the baseline and turns it over. There's Campion, shovels to Hernandez. On the baseline, through some contact, no. Hiddle the offensive rebound. Smith drives, kicks, they move it. Hiddle voice. a foul on Jack Campion. I think of all the stats and everything that's happened this game, that foul just a possession to go it was Duke's first foul on the defensive end. You know, and that's got to be disappointing because you got to be close enough to foul someone, you know, when they're shooting the ball this way. And Duke hadn't just been physical and aggressive yet on the defensive end. I think they relied on it, came out relying on the offense, and they shot the ball poorly early and they find themselves in the game. And then maybe it did become a little more settling for threes. And then the defense you had mentioned, picking up in transition and defending ball screens. They were they were just slow. Their communication has been off. They're a little slow. I mean, for whatever that reason may be. But I know Shire isn't happy about it at all. Foster goes slashing again. Young cleans it up with another offensive rebound for Duke. Burrowing down low and he gets the roll. He's sending a message to his group because he's sending these guys. He's put his five, five of his more competitive guys and defenders out there to say, go out there and compete. We'll figure the score out later. Roach, Filipowski, Mitchell, they all sit here, closing down the first half for two. It's a one possession game. Mervis with nowhere to go. Hit on the hand though. Here's Smith, who's got eight in this first half. Gotta get it up. Smith draws back iron. Foster clears it. Proctor in transition. Proctor lost his footing and is called for a traveling violation. The best defensive possession of the game right there for Duke. I'm okay with, with anything getting in the paint, getting this deep, playing physical, may kick it out, but if not, they're okay getting into the glass. Ryan Young's in there battling. Like I said, he's one of their better Positional defender, he is their best low, low post offensive weapon. And you can see Coach Shire here just putting guys out there. Just hey, you defend, you play hard to get out there right now. Sending a message to a couple starters there. And Duke is only now pulled even in total rebounding margin at 20 apiece with Southern Indiana. 
Foster whistled for a foul on the perimeter against Hernandez. Well, at least this group is close enough to foul. Shire's okay with that. They didn't have to worry about foul trouble yet this half. And Stan Gerard, meanwhile, his group up by three. Told you they played Michigan State, who at the time was ranked fourth in the country. In the second half of that game, they played them completely even. 37-37 was the second half score against the Spartans. They also play St. Louis, who is a very physical team that switches everything. So they've had this style of defense. They've seen it already in a high major program. Shot clock winding down on Sam Mervis. He kicks Smith. Jacks connects. A.J. Smith, he's up to 11 to go along with nine rebounds in this first half. But look at the penetration here. Campion gets in the middle of the defense, the paint. And if he doesn't get it, there's one more pass there for an open three. Duke just seems to be a step, a step slow on a defensive end. Southern Indiana had been averaging six made threes a game. They've got seven here already in the first half at Duke. That's what you need to pull off the upset. You're going to have to get close to 15 threes to pull this upset off. And they're halfway there. Proctor driving in the final seconds with a scoop. Much needed for Duke to head to halftime. Who saw this coming? Southern Indiana up by four. Tyrese Proctor to... I think this team will rise, obviously, in the Kempom rankings, but they feel comfortable about where they are in the season. They feel like they've had some losses slip away late in some games, and if their guard play is strong, they feel like they're going to do really well in their league. Starting group is back out there for John Shire to begin the second half. It was a lot of the reserves on the floor who got it to within four, playing with Tyrese Proctor as well. Mervis dropped it off, and then Powell had it blocked by Filipowski. Mervis took it back to Hernandez. And those guys sat for the final 329. Filipowski, Roach, Mitchell, and McCain. Hernandez with a miss, and Duke can trim it to one possession again. Tyrese Proctor off to Jared McCain. Knocks it down, and it's a one-point game. Great start there by Duke coming off the ball screen. Tyrese Proctor is one of the best pick and roll point guards in the country. Comes off, find Jared McCain on the, on the shakeup. Knockdowns the three. Sam Mervis trying to set up a ball screen from Powell. Here's Hernandez, one of the top two scorers for Southern Indiana. The other is this guy, A.J. Smith, who had the 11 and 9 in the first half. That's a tough two. Duke's got it. They haven't led since it was 5-3. Roach off the bounce. And Roach got fouled. You're seeing Duke when they're at their best. Getting a rebound, driving in transition, and finishing. And here, here's the ball screen here. He's reading pa Filipowski's man. He tags. Knows he has McCain lifting up in the corner. Knocks down the three. I think he's the best three-point shooter on the team, so it's always a good idea to find him as well. And Another one of the talented freshmen on this Duke roster. They had made seven threes over the last two games coming into today. So we're tied at 35 after Duke trailed an unranked non-conference opponent at halftime at Cameron. For the first time since 2011, Davidson, a game that Duke did go on to win, 82-69. And Roach has a roll out. Was about to jinx him and say he's the first lead in a while and missed the free throw. Yeah, we said not since 5 3. Duke came back with a lot of this extended pressure and they force a 10 second count on Southern Indiana. I think the most compelling deal of the first half was Duke only committed two fouls and he sent the message to four of his starters. He sat him down. He didn't play the last three and a half minutes and those fouls didn't happen until those guys went to the bench. So if you felt something shaking in Durham, that was the halftime speech of Coach Shire there. I guess so. Had to wake his guys up. His number nine team in the country, 4-1 and one on the three-game winning streak that started against Michigan State following the loss to Arizona. McCain with post entry for Kyle Filipowski. Banging underneath and a chance at three. And Duke's got the lead. Great job there, finding the big fella inside. Attacking inside out, not outside in. They're coming out early in the first half, second half here. Drops it inside, and there's just nobody can guard. They have no one to block the shots. Too small. Powell is just not big enough, and they're going to go to him until Coswell comes in. Powell's
Miles out with his third foul, so here comes Coswell. And Kyle Filipowski to the free throw line. I think Coswell is the only guy that has the length to really bother Filipowski inside. He's given up a few pounds, but he does have the length to bother him. Filipowski couldn't stamp it. Battle on the boards, Mitchell and Mervis, and a tie-up. Keeps it at this end of the floor. In addition to the defensive pressure, sure seemed like Duke got back into it with more aggression on the offensive glass. Well, I mean, we talked about it in the opening. It's just that sometimes they settle too much. Too many jump shots, not enough touches in the paint, either off the drive or the post-ups. You can see early here in the second half, they go early to Filipowski inside on the post-up. I'd expect Roach, McCain, and Proctor to get in the paint off the dribble. Roach navigating the pick and roll with Filipowski for Mitchell. And now can Southern Indiana handle this? Trailing. And with Cameron a little more charged up right now. And Duke playing better with momentum. Hernandez. Tough shot. That one rolls off. Smith and Hernandez have taken some tough ones. Proctor pushes. He kicks. McCain rises. Got it! This is the way the Blue Devils want to play. Turn defense in the offense. They came out slow the first half. They're coming out aggressive in the second half when his defensive end of the floor here. Mitchell a slam, McCain a three, 11 zip in the south. The ball movement, playing unselfish. And of course, defending the basketball. Again, they extend pressure, nearly another 10 second count on Southern Indiana. And now has to set up its offense halfway through the shot clock with Mervis directing. Mitchell is the one hounding A.J. Smith, 21, bottom right corner of your screen. Hernandez, much easier this time at the cup. There's Tyrese Proctor in that ball screen with Filipowski that they used so well on Tuesday. There they led the points. Filipowski took some contact from Coswell. Again, still in the game for Powell. Smith off the screen comes to get it. Coswell, the veteran on the block, offensive foul. Yeah, he may not like the call, but he's entitled to his position. You can't move him, you can't go through his chest anymore. You used to be entitled to bump, you got one bump in the past. No longer the case, he's entitled to that spot. He leaned into it with his shoulder, Filipowski. Obliges and goes down and gets the call. Nolan Coswell still smiling about it. <laughs> Came up court. Five-point Duke lead. Proctor. Trying to cross up Campion. Roach open to hit. Largest lead for Duke. The pressure of Duke extending like that once Southern Indiana gets across half court. They don't have a ton of time. Late shot clock here at eight for Smith. Campion to the corner. Got it back from Hernandez. Now Milky. In and out. Cleared by Filipowski. And now down on the floor. That's A.J. Smith. He's been one of, if not the best player for Southern Indiana so far this year. We will check on A.J. Smith when we come back to Cameron. Illinois, and it's good to see him up and moving on the sideline and walking around. This is what happened 21 in red. Yeah, you don't know what happened. He just comes down and grabs his calf. And he's such an important piece for this team. The guy who last year played just six minutes per game, scored less than two points per game. 
sat behind some really good players and had to wait his turn. Stan Gerard said he was a little impatient, but he had a great summer, great preseason, and for a guy who was actually in the transfer portal after last season but decided to return, he's been outstanding for USI. How about the spin from Filipowski? Wow. Great spin move, no double team coming. Filipowski's telling Cosmo, block this. Kyle Filipowski's got a double-double. Campion trying to separate from Roach and gets a foul call on Jeremy Roach. Great move. Faces him up, so gets him off his body and just drives and spins on him. And I think he needs to do that more in the post. Instead of playing with his back to the basket, turn his face, that means the defense has to get his hands off him. Allows him to use his skill set. And I think he's the most skilled seven-footer in college basketball. Keyron Powell comes back in, probably to try to defend Filipowski, even though he's got those three fouls. Here he is on the block, and he gets fouled by Mark Mitchell. Mark Mitchell, so you always tell your defender you want him to be the second guy to jump. Came over late in the rotation. He's picked it up on it, both ends of the floor as well. I think he's their most versatile defender. He's able to guard one through five. Powell's good on the first. Hey, what a week 13 ACC Network football lineup we've got for you tomorrow. Starts at noon Eastern with Pitt against Duke, who's dropped four out of five, trying to get back on track. Then Virginia Tech trying to get bowl eligible against Virginia. Then Carolina and NC State battled eight and three teams at 8 Eastern. And Mitchell's such a key cog in this team and where this season can go for Duke. They all bring something special to the group. None bigger than this guy right here. And off the Proctor to Filipowski. Again, navigating the pick and roll. Tyrese Proctor setting it up for Duke. Campion nearly lost it. Has some space and hits another. Maybe he's more comfortable on balance. He's just so crafty. He's quick and he's crafty. He gets to his spots. Proctor, look at that dish. Mitchell too strong. McCann goes battling on the offensive boards. And a tie-up. And the arrow favors the other way. I mean, Tyrese Proctor in the pick and roll Tuesday, we've already alluded to this, but he was so effective. And John Shire said afterward, I remember watching him in high school thinking, this guy is a wizard in pick and roll. And John Shire felt like every time they went pick and roll the other night, they got a wide open shot. You do. His vision is unreal. I, I think it's just, it's just superpower. I, I think that's the thing that he does better than just about anybody in the country. He gets to a spot, he sees everything on the floor. And for what he brings on the defensive end of the floor, he spends a lot of energy. I nitpick with him, but I want him to be more aggressive on the offensive end. But he's really a complete player. Over and back calls. Tillman hadn't established himself in the front court. Well, you look at points per possession, pick and roll operators, the, the guy controlling off the pick and roll, and who are the most efficient in the pick and roll in the ACC according to Synergy? Tyrese Proctor is top two in this league. He is behind Bud. Bud Jr. there, Carrington, the pit freshman, has just been unbelievable in what he's shown so far. But I, I think Tyrese is just the most complete guard in this league, if not the country. Uh, really underrated defensively, but if he takes on the toughest assignments against bigger wings and guards. That's high praise. No, he is. He's fun to watch. Off the bounce, late shot clock, Roach. Hits. Jeremy Rose says we've been, we've been too much talk about Tyrese Brockton. Like, don't forget about me. The seniors got eight playing in his 101st career game. And this pressure forces another 10 second count. Second one on Southern Indiana, paired with an over and back at the midcourt stripe. And Duke's pressure calling, causing all sorts of problems for the Eagles. Just completely disruptive. Jeremy Rose stopping the ball there. Just above half court, creating that turn over there. Coach Shire may keep his voice after all. I thought he was going to lose it for the way he sounded in his warm-ups. <laughs> Better 
second half for Duke. Foster attacks. Proctor off the crossover on Campion. Darius Proctor starting to feel it. Campion got a piece of it. Three to shoot. Here's Roach. Outscored Southern Indiana 23 to 5 in the second half. Campion bounces for Powell and he jams on Stewart. And now Tyrese Proctor is slow to get up for Duke. This is what I talked about earlier and some of the mistakes that was happening as a guard. When you run into a screen like that, you just didn't know it was there. And I know it's loud, the crowd is cheering. But that's part of what the next step with this young group. You got to communicate. The screen's coming. Tries to get over and just gets nailed there by Powell. So Proctor departs with 12.42 to go. We'll keep an eye on that here in the second half. For now, it's Foster, Blakes, Roach, Filipowski, and Stewart. And Roach turns it over. Campion off to the races. Couldn't lay it in over Stewart. And then last touch by the Eagles. Campion would like to have that back. He has zero chance of making that shot against Stewart with his athleticism. Chasing him down. Great job by the freshman coming in. So what do, you do? Shot. what do you do as a guard here? I'll pull that back out. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. He tried to volleyball spike that. Got a little lucky there. He hit the rim. Yeah. I think he jumped so high, the referee probably thought he hit it on his head. So they did call it a goal They did, yeah. He hit the rim. Great call. And two points for Campion. He's up to 11. Ten-point margin coming up on 12 to go. Roach trying to shake Smith, and Roach is fouled again. It's a notable difference when Proctor's not in. The other guards don't come off the ball screen as much and I, I tend to say press. They don't press the big, making the big stay and hold. It just forces some rotation. These guys are coming off. They're too quick to give up the ball and that's what makes him so special. He just puts so much pressure on your defense. How do you press a big? Well, of his size, when he comes off, he's coming off and he doesn't allow his defender to get in between him and the basket. So he's tight to Yes, he's tight set. coming off and he stays in front of that big. Because as a defender, as a big, you're taught, let my guard get back in front. Tyrese Proctor doesn't let his defender get back in front. So he holds the big, the other big rolls. He puts your weak side defense in so much trouble. And then he just, his vision to find an open guy is invaluable to this Duke's team. Jeremy Roach makes both. He's got 13 points to lead all Duke players. Leads a dozen. Southern Indiana has as many turnovers as made baskets out of halftime. And that is not the shot Stan Gerrard wanted. Duke's up by 12. They are rolling in this second half against Southern Indiana. Dorothy, who were those fellas? Melina, Nolan Richardson court at the Bud Walton Arena will be buzzing when they get there. Good news, we just heard about Tremont Mark. who played so well this week and in the game today for Arkansas against North Carolina that he's been released, thankfully, from a local hospital and had an MRI which showed no significant injury to his back. And he is going to be allowed to travel back to Fayetteville along with his teammates tomorrow morning. Great news. Great news. So we'll see what his status is, of course, Wednesday against Duke. That's when things really pick up for the Blue Devils. And then next weekend, they've got ACC action. Better offensive rebound for Duke up by 14. Good sign for Southern Indiana. 21 in red. A.J. Smith is back into the game after grabbing at that left leg. Foster attacks and scores. By the way, they took off the two points that they had given to Jack Campion. And they ruled that there was no basket interference. And so we ping pong on that potential two points. And instead of 44, it's 42. And then three more. Javius Moore with his second triple. Moore said, I got, I got it back. Don't worry. 
Confident young man off the bench for Southern Indiana. Midway through the second half. Roach off the crossover. Driving dish, Foster. And the weak side of the rebound hauled in by Campion. What do you want to see from Southern Indiana here? I think they got to get back to spreading the floor out, opening the court up a little bit. They got to handle, do a better job of handling Duke's pressure. They did a great job early of driving gaps, kicking the three point shooters. It's Stewart on Campion. Nowhere to go. Stewart can guard all sorts of positions for you. Shot clock at seven. He shuts off Campion again. More on the baseline. Roach quickly back the other way. Well, J.D. is more with eight points. Guy who hadn't scored this year in 23 minutes of action. He's playing well. He's showing you what he's capable of. And another weapon for this team. The offense has been floor. Extra pass, Roach. Can't knock it down. And the rebound to Smith. So Smith's got a double-double, and then Campion, the length of the half-court feed to Kieran Powell. Down the single digits now, and Southern Indiana within nine with still nine and a half to go here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Defense and the offense, this is what you see here. They created five turnovers so far here in the second half, and 10 seconds count the pressure. And once that you don't see is that they sped him up a bunch and took a lot of quick shots, which are just as effective as turnovers. It is a 7-0 run the last 90-plus seconds for Southern Indiana. Proctor back into the game behind the back, and Mitchell had it blocked at the rim by Powell. Mitchell's got to get his right shoe back on, so five on four in the meantime. Campion back iron, long rebound out to Hernandez, and a fresh 20. gets switched on to Campion. Hernandez with a burst. Hernandez off the hesitation, couldn't score it. Offensive rebound, and Powell got bumped on the baseline. And a foul is called on Jared McCain. It's just some confusion again there with the Duke's weak side defense. If you're switching, there's no need to rotate. And I think the freshman, Jared McCain, that time was late. No need for him to help, he did, and he was laying his clothes out and gave up a middle, a middle drive there. Southern Indiana has hung around despite Duke's best efforts here out of halftime. If you're just joining us, Southern Indiana led by four at the break. Campion backs out Filipowski. Now driving on the seven-footer with a scoop that rolls off, and Proctor's got the rebound. Foster trying to scoop it up, and he gets fouled by Jack Campion. Taylor Foster does a great job when he comes in and attacking the basket. He doesn't settle for threes. Big, big guard, big lead guard at 6'5", uses his length, his size. Freshman from Harrisburg, North Carolina, was ranked number 22 in our ESPN 100. Had the big game against Michigan State in the Champions Classic. Hey, here's your lineup for the ACC-SEC Men and Women's Basketball Challenge. First on Tuesday night for the men, it's Mississippi State, Georgia Tech at 7 Eastern. Then at 9.15, Georgia, Florida State. Then on Wednesday for the women, it's Florida, Georgia Tech at 5 Eastern. And Vandy against number 10, NC State at 7.15. Catch all the action from those games right here on ACCN and, of course, on the ESPN app. So Foster good on both, and the talented freshman has the lead back in double figures for the Blue Devils. Good pass by Moore. Smith was thinking poster. Filipowski had other ideas. Duke runs. Here's Proctor. Can't connect. Southern Indiana now try to control the pace of the game. Duke's in a switching lineup. So expect them to attack Filipowski and try to drive him on the switches. He drops on Mervis and stays with Coswell. Now Proctor switches on to Smith. And 
Filipowski gets tagged for a foul. It's his second. 7.37 to go, second half. Duke leads by 11. They got a book from Tennessee to town. Carolina team is, is really talented and still trying to find itself. A reminder, our game here, just part one of a doubleheader of men's hoops on ACC Network as Smith got whistled for a foul there. No, they're going to say it's on Nolan Coswell instead and an offensive foul against Southern Indiana. But Clemson's coming up against Alcorn State. Clemson off to a 4-0 start. They've got some solid mid-major wins in there. P.J. Hall's averaging about 20 a game. I, I think that team is really talented, and I'd be, I'd be surprised if they're not finishing in the top four in this league. And it's all said and done. They experience backcourt. Obviously, P.J. Hall inside. They got depth. First and second in that group. He's a little bit slow to get up after he got fouled at the rim. It's on Coswell again. It's his third. He's got a right leg caught up. It's funny, Bone Hall. You see him shaking that arm there. Good thing he got that pad on his elbow. Helps pushing the blow a bit there. Still shaking it out at the stripe. We've seen Duke a, a few times early on these first few weeks of the season. I think back to the conversation we had with John Shire about Kyle Filipowski, about Filipowski's decision to return. Yes. He told us that I don't think Kyle Filipowski could handle the Tennessee game being his last game ever in college. He I said that. Yeah, he said that because I wondered if it was the hip surgery that made him come back. He didn't go because he wasn't sure if he was healthy. He said no, if he was completely healthy, he would have come back. And he, he, he loves Duke. He loves everything about it. And I think he wants to leave his mark on his historic program. He knows what the talent the level that they have. And for him, his mindset is I'm trying to win a national championship. John Shire said it to us. He's just a different dude. He said that's the type of guy that makes that decision. And, and maybe not other guys like him that would. And we said, how's he different? He said, I don't know. He's a 3-9 student, if that tells you anything. And, yeah, fired up about the way last year ended in the second round of the NCAA tournament. In most programs, your program rises and, and drops off of this guy's decision like his. It's Duke, obviously, but he, he values his legacy, I think. I think it's important to him to do something special in his Duke uniform. Smith driving right at Filipowski, rips down another rebound. He's got a dozen of them. We're talking about a guy that was the third-ranked player in his class coming in, ends up as a freshman being their best player. Proctor and one! Wow, look at the backdoor cut. Finish is strong. I think he's a little bit upset. He thought he might have tried to undercut him a little bit, not knowing he just lost his balance. Tyrese Proctor wow. with something to say <laughs> to Javius Moore after Moore's foul and Proctor's slam on the give and go with Kyle Filipowski and the officials Ted Valentine, Mark Schnur, and Jamel Spearman will look at the monitor. Philip, uh, Tyrese Proctor got up grabbing his head. I think he was telling the official he got when he tried to block it, he hit him in the head. Backdoor cut there, pass by Filipowski. Another look. See the slap there. So the initial foul you got from Moore, obviously a foul, perhaps consideration to it being upgraded. And then Proctor just kind of grabbing on as he comes down. And then 
hovering over yeah. Javius Moore as well. Sort of three parts to that play. He's got to be careful with that. I mean, they called the foul, so you know they saw it. But if you go up and you start, they, that could be taken as taunting, and you don't want to get any. He's a guy who's already fouls. shown in a couple yeah. of years that he's he's not afraid to exchange words uh, sometimes. No, he's a lot. He's he's a tough guy. He's got a, he's he's got a feistiness about him. And, but as a leader of this team and as a captain, you don't want to show that. You want to, you know, in difficult moments, you want to show the guys that you're cool and calm under pressure. And he has so much responsibility on his shoulder. Because like I said, he's, in a, he's a big time defender. I, I don't think people understand how good of a defender he is. And at times I nitpick about it because I want him to be more aggressive. Even Coach Shire wants him to be more aggressive on the offensive end. That doesn't necessarily mean him shooting it. It just means he's such an elite passer takes care of the basketball so well you want guys like that to continue to be aggressive Let's see if they assess a flagrant here I think if to anyone it'd probably be on the initial more foul no I agree you could you could do I mean you could call it, it depends on if they got an angle that shows maybe if he was hitting the head After a lengthy look from Ted Valentine and Jamel Spearman. The officials now confer with Mark Schnur. And the drama builds <laughs> at Cameron with 6.29 to go. Got to show TV Teddy now. We got to make sure I got Ted Valentine is, gets it right now. And he's one of the longtime great officials in this league and been around for a while. Well respected in this not many better than Ted Valentine, I can tell you that. One of my favorites. Well, we will await word from down at floor level up to us in the crow's nest here at Cameron. And it looks like Tyrese Proctor's disbelieving of yeah. whatever Ted Valentine just told John Shire. Javius Moore doesn't seem to mind too much. And Jeremiah Hernandez is getting ready to shoot free throws for Southern Indiana. Yeah. So it sounds like what has been assessed is a flagrant one on Javius Moore for the foul of Tyrese Proctor on the dunk. And then a dead ball technical foul to Tyrese Proctor for standing over and presumably for the taunting of Javius Moore. See the blow here to the head there. So Hernandez will shoot first. Again, the baseline for a flagrant one is just excessive in nature and or unnecessary. And that seems to fit the definition on Moore's foul. I think the officials got it right. It's fair in the taunting call on Proctor. And Proctor took the blow to the head, which led to the end one. So Proctor now gets two free throws here. After Hernandez got his two. So. 65-51 is the Duke lead with 6.29 to go after no blood effectively on those four free throws. A possession as well. Remember, two free throws and possession for a flagrant one. I think you call that two to get a, get control of the game. You don't want any emotions to 
get out of control here. You get hit in the head, you stand over a guy. I want to make sure everybody's under control. Got their emotions in check. And now we're ready to go. <laughs> Need a warm up after that. And it's more on Proctor. Proctor turns the corner, dishes for Mitchell underneath. Rebound to Smith. It's Mervis, Coswell, Smith, Moore, and Hernandez. The five out there for Stan Gerard in Southern Indiana. Here's Moore. Oh, it's going up. <laughs> no doubt about that. He's knocked down a couple of threes tonight. You taught me. I'm going to go back at you. He's got 11. His <laughs> first 11 points in a Southern Indiana uniform for the Mississippi native. We celebrated each bucket today, all four of them, including three triples. Filipowski, the offensive rebound and stick back. Fifteen points, thirteen rebounds to go along with three assists for Kyle Filipowski. Hernandez trying to shake McCain and now Smith on Mitchell. To the corner, Mervis. Wraps it around more. Too strong this time. And it'll stay at this end in Southern Indiana. This is a great, just a great find here. Lazy close out there by Proctor. Moore is like. You just dunked on me. I'm going to trade you two for one here. I mean, three for two here. And McCain is just misses the shot, and Filipowski just follows it up. And there's just no answer for him inside. Filipowski get whatever he wants. Moore finds Powell just back into the game. That's another one of those Duke mix up. Defensively, Filipowski staying home at the five, but under eight seconds, they switched the ball screen. Guard didn't get that switch. Filipowski's man get the basket. Run Filipowski off the screen. And Filipowski tried to get Powell in the air. And a foul eventually called. I think the right call was made. One official below didn't have the angle on it. That's why the late whistle, but you can see his arms were down. And it's the fourth foul on Keyron Powell. Two shots for Kyle Filipowski. Only three of seven at the line tonight. Hey, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC huddle crew gets you set for an afternoon of football. And then at 6.30, it's a complete wrap-up of those games and get you prep for prime time. ACCN, 8 Eastern, State Carolina. Then after the game, a full post-game show to wrap up the night, all of it right here on ACCN and the app. See if Duke comes out and extends their pressure here and really try to put an exclamation mark on this game. Roach shadowing Mervis. And you see their ball screen defense now. They're no, they're, 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 Philip House is staying home. Now late in the clock, they're going to switch here. And Hernandez got to the rim and will shoot two. Drawing the foul on Filipowski is third. So different ball screen defenses. Right. There's drop coverage. There's hedging. There's switching. Take us through a little a primer, a well, little intro well, course on it. You, the, the key is for them is Duke is trying to protect Filipowski as they go forward. Because if not, you're going to have to attack him because you know he's so important to the team. So originally, Duke is trying the first ball screen that they ran. He just, you know, he went under. This time, he comes out hard. He switches it. And you don't want to make a living putting him one-on-one -on, you know, one -on -one against a guard or a wing. Because you don't want to, that risk there, the foul. They, throughout the year, they're going to have to try to figure out a way. They, you got to mix up your coverages for one. But you got to protect that guy. He is the one guy that's invaluable to the to team. We were told before the season that they would play Filipowski a lot in what they call blue, which is like hedge and yep. touch a little bit, but it's not a, a super hard hedge. Right. Just so he can recover. Because for one, they have rebound concerns. So they want to keep Filipowski on the other team's big. So he'll come out this initial screen here. You can see him playing off. He's hedging. Now he's getting back to his man. The ball screen this time. A Mervis floater drops down. First points of the day for Sam Mervis, the senior point guard who's only got eight points now all season. 
he's seen the job that Jack Campion has done, and he's trying to pick up his offensive output. An 11 point game with 345 to go. Mitchell faces up. They wanted him to attack, and he does, and draws a foul. They get the foul on A.J. Smith. Mark Mitchell to the line when we come back to Durham. At Marshall's, our buyers hustle every day to of East West. <laughs> and then home next weekend to host Bowling Green in year two at the D1 level before a conference play at the end of December in the Ohio Valley Conference. Yeah, Coach Gerard was a little bit disappointed at his team. He says he tries to go 500 and out of conference, non-conference games, and they haven't scheduled lightly with St. Louis and Michigan State and here in Cameron. This game isn't over. They represented themselves well. Yeah, Mark Mitchell missed both, so that has left the door ajar for the Screaming Eagles. Inside of three and a half to go, second half action to Cameron. Mervis off to Moore. He's made a whole lot of friends here in Durham. He goes driving, lost it. Smith retreats it. Road switches on to him. Four to shoot. Smith, long two. Back iron. Smith slow to get up to his feet. He goes tumbling, and Duke slows things down. Foster, Proctor, Roach, Mitchell, and Filipowski. The five out there to finish for John Shire. Watch the ball screen run up by Filipowski here. He sets it for Foster, who snakes it, attacks, had it poked away by Smith. And it stays with Duke with six to shoot. Champions coming back into the game, and he replaces Sam Mervis. Look for Roach here coming out. Roach sets the screen and was trying to get it. Instead, Filipowski spinning and banging and hitting off glass. Yeah, there, there's Powell is just too small for him. He, once he gets an angle, he can't affect Filipowski's shot. 19 and 13 for Kyle Filipowski. Battle could corral it. Filipowski has it picked. Hernandez lays it in. Filipowski's upset with himself over that turnover. He thought he, thought he had numbers on the other end. Team high 15 for Jeremiah Hernandez, and John Shire takes a timeout with 2.07 to go. All right, big picture for Duke. Trying to get a fourth consecutive win before we told you they go to Arkansas on Wednesday. And then that early ACC conference game, we've had that the last few years, will be at Georgia Tech next weekend. Where do you think Duke is at now six games into the season? They've improved. I, I, I think this is the type of game they were coming in, they were heavily favored, and they slept walk through the first half of the game. And it gave... Shire some firepower against these guys to get them motivated because they got to get ready. They're heading into Arkansas. Arkansas is coming off two losses in a row, and they're at home. I, I think Arkansas's mindset is that we have to win this game. And that arena, this is the first true road game for the Blue Devils. So you don't know how these guys are going to respond, particularly the freshmen and the younger guys, in that environment, which is one of the best in college basketball. So there, there'll be a big, big test coming up for the Blue Devils. It's coming Wednesday night for John Shire and his team. Late night from Fayetteville. A reminder, if you're tuning in looking for Clemson against Alcorn State, we will get you to Little John Coliseum as soon as we're done here at Cameron Indoor Stadium to see if Clemson can stay perfect in the non-conference part of the schedule out of the gates. Against the zone now, Duke navigates that. And Roach couldn't connect. Batted around, and Mitchell's got it. Duke is so hard to zone because they have many shooters, but more importantly, so many guys that can find guys and, and, and really good passers, and that's better than the guy with the ball in his hand. Proctor, pick and roll. So smooth. That's what we're talking about. He just, I, I think he's one of the best pick and roll guys we showed the graphic of it but that's what I'm talking about you don't stop the ball he punishes you at the rim with his size and his ability to finish at the rim and his floaters and mid-range 
Hernandez short. And coming up on the final minute. Hats off to Southern Indiana. They battled tonight. And they led at the half here against Duke. Smith fouls Foster. Absolutely no reason to be disappointed. You're South Indiana. Violent effort. They won't be the last team to come in Indo Cameron and walk out of here with an L. But they destroyed the spread. Did a great job coming in and competing. This team was leading at the half. And Duke stirred to life finally in the second half after trailing at the break. And they came out and ramped up the defensive pressure at the end of the first half, carried that over into the second half, and they really got after Southern Indiana and defended. Shire won't be happy with the performance, but he'll take the win. And I think he knows he, it's giving him all the ammunition he needs to get them ready to play at Arkansas. Because it'll be the toughest game, I think, that they've played all year. Kolopowski, the putback, gets him up to 21 points. And we hit the final minute. Cool moment for Southern Indiana and Stan Gerard, who empties the bench here, gives some guys a chance to set foot on the floor at Cameron Indoor. Yaren Hassan, the UConn transfer, missed it from deep. He's out there with Johnny Semeny and Luther Smith as well. And we hit the final half minute on this Friday night in Durham. Tell two halves, no question. Roach got it to go, plus a foul. Roach just rejects the ball screen. Somehow scoops that in. He's wondering why he got fouled with 14.4 to go. I think he was wondering if they gave him the and one or not. Like, <laughs> was this early? Did he? Is it two shots or underneath? for Jeremy Roach. Southern Indiana gave Duke everything it had tonight at Cameron. But Duke's got an 80-62 win and the Blue Devils are 5-1 headed to Fanville. Got to be pleased if you shower with the, the way your team responded coming out of the second half. They know they got work to do. 